Developing overnight, former President Trump threatening to invoke executive privilege to block the House committee investigating the January 6th uh, insurrection from obtaining a wide range of documents from government agencies, including some that relate to members of Trump's inner circle. The request seeks call logs, telephone records, schedules for Trump's children, former First Lady Melania Trump, as well as several others close to the former president. Joining us now is Mary Trump, niece of the former president and author of the new book, The Reckoning, Our Nation's Trauma and Finding a Way to Heal. The book is out now. Mary, thanks so much for being with us. I'm wondering what you make of the former president's uh, promise to invoke executive privilege, not from a legal standpoint, but with your psychological background here. If he's so proud of his behavior in the days surrounding January 6th, why does he want to hide it? Yeah, it's a really good question. Uh, I, he is desperate for the truth to remain hidden here. Uh, he also knows that he no longer has the powers and protections of the Oval Office to allow him to skate by this. I was actually quite pleased at the depth and breadth of the request being made by the committee because it shows that they understand the seriousness of what we faced and what we continue to face. And Donald will do everything in his power to stonewall, to avoid, to evade, and to deny them the information they want. And he will give everybody else the same marching orders. You know, it's interesting because some of their requests, the nature of them are sort of right in your wheelhouse also. They're looking for documents pertaining to the mental stability of the former president or his fitness for office in the days between the insurrection and the inauguration. From where you would sit, uh, how would you assess his state of mind then? During that uh, 79 days or 75 days between uh, the election being called for Biden and uh, his inauguration, I think Donald was probably in a mo more desperate state than he's ever been in his life. First of all, he just suffered a humiliating defeat, which in his worldview is unthinkable. So that was absolutely freaking him out. On the other hand, uh, he was still trying one, to spread the big lie, which would somehow allow him to cling to power, because again, without it, he is subject to all sorts of criminal investigations and lawsuits. Uh, so I think we saw over that time a withdrawal. Uh, he apparently forgot that COVID even existed during that period of time. And we, we saw increasingly desperate attempts to spin and um, to get out of having to face the responsibility for his actions. And I think one of the results of that was the insurrection of January 6th, which he incited. So your new book talks about what you call our nation's trauma and finding a way to heal. And you do think that your uncle was responsible for some of this trauma dividing this nation. I wonder what you say to those who say, look, we just need to turn the page. Stop talking about him. Look forward, not backwards. What's your answer to that? My answer is we can't, unfortunately. He's being, uh, he's remains relevant because the Republican Party have chosen to allow him to remain relevant. They continue to empower him. They continue to seek his endorsements and his permission. Uh, and he continues to control the base. And the other thing I would say is that one of the reasons we're in the mess we're in is because historically, as a country, we have never been able to hold ourselves accountable, let alone powerful leaders who have either committed crimes or committed unconstitutional behaviors. And so there's a direct line from that to Donald. And I think it's time we don't turn the page and we take a long, hard look at where we are and how we got here and why we continue to be so vulnerable to autocratic, cruel, and incompetent leaders like Donald. You know, you've been asked repeatedly uh, recently if you think he will run again. Uh, a more interesting question, I thought, was you were asked if you thought his kids might seek uh, higher office. And I want to read the response that you gave. You wrote, my uncle is such a buffoon, but he does have charisma. If you met him for the first 10 seconds, you would see it. After that, you would realize that he's a total psychopath, but a lot of people are very susceptible to his kind of charisma. Donald Jr. and Ivanka don't have any of that. They don't survive politically without him. They don't survive in business without him. No, I don't see that, them running. Hopefully, they'll all end up in jail. Well, I'm there sure I go, pull, <laughs> pulling my punches again. Yeah, I just wanted, wanted to give you a chance to, to, to explain what you meant by all that. 
One of the reasons Donald got as far as he got is besides the fact that there's always somebody around to enable him who has more power and more intelligence than he does, is he does have charisma. He, ha he is charismatic. It's a charisma that doesn't appeal to me, but it clearly appeals to tens of millions of people in this country. I, I don't see anybody else at the top of the Republican Party who has the same kind of uh, sway with other with their voters. And it's certainly not certainly not my cousins. I, I just don't see how it would be like lightning striking four times in the same place. I don't see it happening. I don't think they have um, the re first of all, they don't have the history. Donald had a 20, 30, 40 year career in the media. Um, so they don't have the reach. They don't have the connections. And again, without him, they don't have the power either. So um, if if they want to try, that would that would be interesting because it, it would tell us a lot about the current state of the Republican Party if they were accepted. Mary Trump, the book is The Reckoning, Our Nation's Trauma and Finding a Way to Heal. Nice talking to you this morning. Thanks for coming on.